Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I take the Word of God and through the internet deliver it to you. Today's message is entitled, The Testimony, and it is based on 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. And so let us dive into the Word today. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God. And God has testified about His Son. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who do not believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about His Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. Amen. Since it's Mother's Day, I figured I would start off with something that my mother always told my sister and I. She would say that, Whatever we do, make sure that it does not bring shame or disgrace to the family name. How many of you have heard that or something similar from your parents? Some sort of honor code that that they taught you, uh, you know, to be mindful of your family name and the and your family and those around you. That was important to my mom and my dad, and they had invested themselves in us, worked hard to provide for us, taught us from right, or taught us right from wrong, taught us to have manners, all with the hope that we would grow up to be good, God-fearing, hard-working, respectable people, not a bad thing to aspire to be. Son, It takes a long time to build up a good reputation, and it takes a split second, a single bad choice to tear that reputation down. Your actions, my mom said, don't just affect you, but they affect your whole family. You need to always be mindful of that. Now, I wish I could say that I I took her so seriously that I never, ever did anything wrong to tarnish my reputation. Not quite. Uh, And my mom knew, as all moms know, that I would not perfectly follow her advice. But any reputation damage that I I did, it was never serious. It was the typical stuff that that teenagers do, things that, that, you know, would cause an adult who thought of you at one time as a good kid to realize you're not as good as they thought you were and but those things all fade over time and uh, I never did anything that that permanently uh, hindered my reputation uh, beyond my teenage years but my mom's advice even though I didn't perfectly follow it it did stay in the back of my head and I overall did try to represent my family well again I didn't always succeed at that but I did try And her words of wisdom were like words of salvation for this former teenager. And I have imparted them to my children. As a fan of Star Wars, I have always been fascinated by the backstory of Anakin Skywalker. And I remember how hopeful his mother, Shmi, uh, was when, when she was able to arrange for his freedom by sending him off with a couple of Jedi Knights, uh, Qui-Gon and uh, the young Obi-Wan Kenobi. And uh, actually, um, if you recall, Shmi uh, had given birth to Anakin, but he had no father. It was a virgin birth of sorts, and and they were uh, poor. And in fact, they weren't even poor. They were owned uh, by a slave master and, and were forced to live in that person's household and serve that person and Shmi is somehow able to because 
because Qui-Gon believes that Anakin is the one that's going to restore balance back into the Force, uh, she is able to get her son out of Dodge, so to speak, uh, and sends him off, uh, though she can't go with them, sends him off with the Jedi Knights. Kind of sad, but but I'm sure as a mother uh, would do for her child, a loving mother would do for her child, she sacrifices going. She sacrifices her own freedom um, for that of her sons. And I imagine, even though she would never witness it, how proud of a mom she must have been to know her son would become a Jedi. All of her life, all of her soul, her thoughts, her prayers, her hopes, her dreams, all of her joy invested in young Skywalker. Yet for those of us familiar with the story, we know how this turned out. And what happened to Anakin, if you recall? He went over to the dark side of the Force. He allowed fear to control him and to drive him mad. And he went over to the dark side of the Force and became Darth Vader. Now, I, like every teenager, uh, when I was a teenager, I did things that I, you know, if I were to go back in time, I would uh, probably do those things differently. Uh, that's easy to say. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, But I can honestly say that, uh, thankfully, I never became Darth Vader. So, again, while my reputation uh, as a teenager got a little bit tarnished by the adults that saw me going through the issues I was going through at the time, um, none of them held that against me. And I, you know, and I have good relationships with most, if not all of them, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and all's well that ends well, but that's not so much the case in, in the story of Anakin Skywalker, who literally tarnished his family name and the reputation of the Jedi's who had invested themselves in this boy, who, who, they, who believed that, that he was going to bring balance to the force. And they were, just as his name was, the Jedis were deeply damaged by this turn of events. And it would take quite some time before the damage was healed. John reminds us today that God has given us the testimony of the gift of eternal life that's been given to us. And that such life is found in Jesus. It's Jesus who gave us that gift of eternal life. Now, in the last few weeks, we have learned from John that to be in Jesus requires what? Does anybody remember what it requires? It requires love. Love, 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 love. What's love got to do with it? Everything. Everything. Those who do not know love do not know God, John shares. For God is love. John also tells us that we who believe in God's Son know that the testimony is true. But to believe does not, as we have discussed before, to believe does not mean mere mental assent. Rather, belief is lived out. It is action. If we believe it, we will live it. Those who do not believe will not live out love. And such people, according to John, are calling God a liar. Those who do not live out love in their lives are calling God a liar. They're giving Christ 
a bad name. Or, as in uh, the Bon Jovi song, they're giving love a bad name. The challenge for us today is not to ruin the Christian family name. It is to be intentional about living in love, not living in fear like Anakin Skywalker did, not living uh, our lives for other people, not living our lives for other things, not living our lives for our political uh, uh, ideologies, not living our lives for any sort of gain or uh, advancement in our status, not living our lives for anything but love. Not living our lives for anything but Jesus Christ, who is love. Not living our lives for anything but God, who is love. And by the grace of God, we can and will bear witness to the truth of God's testimony. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just thank you and praise you for, for this challenging message. We recognize that we have received the testimony from you, that we have received the gift of eternal life from you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Lord, we do believe, but help us in our unbelief. Guide us in our lives so that we may grow ever closer toward you and, and, and that we may as true witnesses, display your love and share that love with all people, no matter who they are, what they've done, what they haven't done, no matter what the details might be, that we may perfectly or as perfectly as we can, in your grace, share your love. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And so I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and listening to this week's message. Uh, before I let you all go, I would like to wish you all a happy Mother's Day. I certainly hope that you are able to spend some time with your mothers, but if you are not able to uh, for one reason or the next, go do something motherly, something loving, something that honors the best in motherhood, and enjoy the rest of your day. Until next week, my friends, God bless you and be a blessing to others. Amen.